Hello everybody, welcome back. <clears throat> Today we're going to be building uh, a signal generator, which I had originally intended to pair with the oscilloscope that at the time of the filming of this video is currently not working uh, and not too sure why. Um, maybe by the time I've uploaded this it'll have been fixed and I'll be able to uh, produce a follow-up video uh, that shows the actual uh, demonstration of the usage of the signal generator, but for now we're just going to build the thing and uh, play around with it. It's got a display so we'll be able to see it at least doing its thing. Um, we don't really have any components we haven't seen before so I won't go into too much explanation. Uh, we've got some nice uh, smooth potentiometers here. Um, I think these are the 50 and 1k ohm uh, potentiometers that they've got here for the amplitude and the offset. Uh, we've got a bunch of different buttons for navigating the menus, I assume. Um, a little LCD display, and just a little, um, what do we have here? Uh, 16 megahertz uh, oscillator. Um, but aside from that, there's nothing new here. So uh, I think I'll just hop right into time-lapse and get started. So we'll see you on the other side. All right, and we're back for the final part of the construction. <clears throat> that went quite smoothly, except for the part where I accidentally wired a 10k ohm resistor into a spot where a 20k ohm resistor was supposed to go, but I was able to handily repair it. I'm glad I caught it before I started things up, because who knows what problems that might have caused after the circuit had power going to it. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just... Uh, squeezing the leads of these ICs a little bit so that they actually fit into the sockets for them. Um, I'm not too sure why, and it's always been done this way, but uh, the legs on an IC always are spread a little bit wider than the holes in which they go into, which always presents a bit of a challenge when socketing them. Not so much challenge with uh, these smaller um, like 8-pin chips with the large 40-pin chip, like this uh, Atmel, um, what is this thing? Atmega 16A, which is basically just a small computer. Um, ooh, that went crunch. Why did that go crunch? That's fine. Okay. Um, I worry about crunching noises because sometimes a crunch means that you folded a lead up underneath the IC when you socketed it, but it'll be fine. There we go. So once those are socketed, and you have to be careful with this kit if you build one for yourself, uh, because there is a there is a pair of capacitors and the uh, oscillator that actually are housed underneath, for whatever reason, the CPU there. I guess for space concerns or something, although there's plenty of board space over here that they could have used. And then we're just going to socket the screen down into the pins for it here. It sinks right in nice and smooth. And we'll take these screws. Oops. Ah, come back here. Let's grab my brand new screwdriver that I bought specifically for my electronics desk here. And screw that in. Don't tighten it down too hard, just in case it's a multi-layer uh, circuit board. You don't want to accidentally break any of the traces that are inside the circuit board. I somehow doubt this one's a multi-layer, but it's better to be safe than have a completely useless display. So we'll just give that one a little tightness, and there we go. There's the signal generator built. Now, I need... 
got some of the leads that I'm going to need here, but I'm going to need to find... alligator clips here. There we go. Because the interesting thing about this, um, oops, no, let's go with do that one. Uh, the interesting thing about this kit is that it requires uh, three different powers, uh, powers going into it. Um, it needs a plus five, a minus twelve, a plus twelve, and a ground. Um, so that's kind of a complicated array of um, voltages that you need to supply to it. Now thankfully my breadboard that I have over here with its integrated power supply has enough um, power supply capabilities to provide all three of those voltages plus a ground reference naturally. Um, I just need to find the rest of, I need, there we go, there we go. All right, so we just need a bunch of those little headers that you normally use with an Arduino. All right, so before we apply any power, we need to figure out what our pins are going to be like here. So well, that's interesting. That's just, okay. Um, so we'll make this black one ground, just like that, and we'll come over here and grab the ground post here, um, and then we're going to make, let's see, let's make plus 12 white and minus 12 black, so we'll just socket those on there. Um, and we need to... Oh, you know what? Before I start connecting anything here, I've got to set the voltages over here. So we're going to get my plus 12 volts. I hope you guys can hear me, because I'm not actually pointing very well at the camera. So I'm just over here at my power supply setting the plus and minus 12 volt uh, things up here. Oh, that's a little too far. I got plus 12, minus 12, and we're actually going to turn the power supply off. Let it bleed out all the power, and then we'll start connecting things here. And we'll make this purple one plus 5 volts. So connect that one there. I'm going to grab our plus 5 volt bead, connect it to the plus 5. We're going to grab, what did I say? Plus 12 is the white lead, which is going to red after I do it there. So, plus 12, and then minus 12. I remember looking up why this needed uh, three different voltages to, to get going, um, but for the life of me, I can't actually remember what the explanation was. So, there we go. We're running out of cables room here. There we go. So let's uh, go ahead and power this up now. And just like it said, I can't see anything on the display because the uh, this little 103 trim pot here is the contrast. There we go. Hmm. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to do some troubleshooting on this unit as well. So, I'll be right back after some troubleshooting. See you in a bit. Alright, we're back. All I have to say about that uh, 
troubleshooting process is check your IC orientation. I had the CPU in backwards. <clears throat> so, um, basically when you first start up this unit, uh, you're not going to see anything on the display. So you're just going to take this uh, resistor here, this potentiometer, and adjust it until the display is to your liking. Oh, I'm going to peel this off because this may actually cause some fairly bad glare for you guys. Uh, so right now it says sine 1000 hertz and off. Not too sure what the off means. Oh, that's probably it's producing the signal and then it's not producing the signal. Um, let's see, high speed, noise random, frequency steps. Okay, so this looks like the settings uh, for the various different things. Okay, so we can turn it up and down with those buttons. And then the reset button seems to uh, reset it to the 1,000, 1 megahertz uh, sine wave there, or 1 kHertz sine. Um, so left and right uh, change the frequency, up and down change the waveform, start turns it on and off and resets it, reset sets it to its basic uh, settings. Now I'm wondering, I'm going to grab these, this BNC connector here, and we'll connect it to the, oops, Connect it there, because I happen to have a frequency counter built into my multimeter, so let's see if we can get a meaningful reading on the multimeter here. Start. And we're not getting anything. Maybe it has to be on the other. Getting nothing. Well, maybe the frequency counter isn't good enough. Let's see. Let's, uh, what is this? I wonder what its range is on the, the frequency counter here. Let's turn it down to like. 200 hertz. See if it can get anything. So it's not reading anything off of that. And it's not reading anything off of that. It could be this cable. It may not be the right cable for it. Um, I'll have to experiment with that a little bit more later. Uh, could be that my multimeter isn't sensitive enough to read this, but until I have a working oscilloscope, I won't be able to properly test whether or not this unit is working. But uh, for all intents and purposes, it seems like it's working. All right, just a quick follow-up. Um, I figured out what was going on with the frequency counter. Um, I didn't give it any amplitude, so the uh, multimeter wasn't able to read any sort of frequency. If I'd had the oscilloscope, of course, I would have been able to see the amplitude problem right, right off the bat. But once I uh, turned the amplitude up a little bit, you can see it's reading uh, see 1.499 kHz on the screen there, and we've got the 1500 Hz sine wave being produced by the uh, frequency generator here. Now there is one thing I wanted to have a look at while I've got it on the thing here, and that's the high speed, which uh, I believe is this output here. Um, let's see, we can do up to 8 megahertz. Let's see if my multimeter can detect a 4 megahertz signal. Yep, there we go, 3.998 megahertz. So, uh, thus far it's looking like this kit works great. Um, so I'm pleased about that. Can't wait to actually show the waveforms on the oscilloscope, if slash when I get it working. Uh, so, once again, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.